Hello students and welcome to video two in chapter 3.4 final accounts. In this first video we did profit and loss. In this video we're going to do the balance sheet. This might be a longer video than normal because this is quite a big topic but we'll try to go through it at a reasonable speed. So um, in the first video we saw that financial statements in the annual report we need to include the um, profit and loss, the balance sheet and the cash flow usually. So the profit and loss we saw that was the uh, revenue cost and profit over a period of time so usually it's a year or it could be a quarter the balance sheet instead looks at the net worth of a business at one moment in time so the net worth means effectively the value of the business or one measure of the value of the business and it's one moment in time and i put a little camera here it's like it takes a photo of the business on one day and shows the value of the business on that day so in this situation, maybe we do the balance sheet as at the end of December 2023. So we get the value of the business here. And then we could do the value of the business again as at the end of December 2024. So we'd have two valuations of the business. Now, in theory, the business could value the business every single day of the year, um, but that would be very time consuming. So usually um, they would do this once a year or uh, formally once a year. Now, during that year, you can see that there's going to be a profit and loss. So as that from this date to this date, the business will also do the profit and loss, which will show the profitability of the business over this period of time. Now, these two are linked. So the business is profitable from this date to this date, then the value of the business will go up and that will be reflected on the balance sheet. I'm going to do another video where I go into that in a little bit more detail, but that's kind of all you need to know for, for this. So the value of the business is effectively assets minus liabilities. And what we're going to we're going to go through and define these in turn. So assets are things that the business owns that have monetary value. So we can break these down into non-current assets and current assets where non-current it's a funny way of saying it. But effectively, these are long term assets where we're going to be using them for more than 12 months. So the most common examples are things like property, which is the land, which the business may or may not own. Plants. In this uh, context, plants means the factory and equipment. So any equipment that the business uses which has a value. So things like machinery and vehicles. We also have intangible assets. We're going to go and define those later in the video. We also have things called current assets. So these are assets, things that the business owns but are likely to be converted into cash within the next 12 months. Why 12 months? Well, because that's when the next accounts will be published. And in theory, these current accounts won't be on that balance sheet because they'll be turned into cash and that cash will be used elsewhere in the business. So the, uh, for the IB, we have three current accounts. The first one is cash because cash can is cash, if you like. Stock. So stock is when we have... Uh, finished products that we can sell or intermediary products. We have work in progress that we haven't finished producing, we haven't sold yet. So um, this stock before the next balance sheet hopefully will be sold and then turned into cash. We also have debtors. Debtors are customers who have bought our product and will pay us at a later date. So effectively, this means we've given them trade credit. So let's say we've given them 30 to 90 days trade credit. They bought our product but they haven't paid us yet. So therefore it's a current asset because these debts will become cash because they're gonna pay us the cash in the next 12 months. And I put this green plus because assets effectively are a plus on the balance sheet because they're things we own, we own which give value to the business. Now we can put these onto the balance sheet. Now the first thing we do is we need a title. Title is gonna be statement of financial position for XX where XX is the name of the business as at, it has to, you have to use this term as at because this indicates that it's as at one day on one day, particular day. Um, and in this situation, it's 31st of December, 2023, but it could be any day that you do a balance sheet for. Now we're gonna put that at the top. I haven't actually put it at the top because the balance sheet's really long. So the, 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 the font would be too small. So the first thing we do is we have two columns and our units here are gonna be millions of dollars. And firstly, we can put the non-current assets onto the balance sheet. 
So the first thing is property, plant and equipment. So the value of our non-current assets is 900 million. And then we have this thing called accumulated depreciation. Video three in this chapter is going to be about depreciation. In short, when we buy assets, we pay a certain amount of money. But usually these assets go down in value over time. So things like cars, machinery, over time they will lose their value. And that's what depreciation means. Depreciation is defined as the decrease in the value of an asset over time. So here we bought these assets for 900 million. They've gone down in value by 100 million. And therefore the total value or the in this situation, the value is not is 800 million. So it's 900 minus 100. Again, we use brackets here indicating that this is a negative number. It's the only negative on this balance sheet. Then current assets, we've got 600 million in cash, 400 million in debtors, 100 million in stock. Then the total current assets is 1.1 billion, which is these added together. So that's just a quick note. Um, we put the totals into the right-hand column. So you see that this first one here, this is the total of 900 minus 100. This 1.1 billion is 600 plus 400 plus 100. And then the last thing we do here is we do total assets, which is 1.9 billion, which is the 800 plus the 1.1. All right, that's assets done. We can now move on to liabilities. Liabilities are on the other side of the balance sheet. So these are things where we owe money to someone else. So assets are things we own. Liabilities are when we owe money to someone else. So I put it like a big minus because effectively it, it's, um, it's money we owe, if you like. So current liabilities like current assets are within the next 12 months. So current liabilities are debts that we have to pay in the next 12 months. So bank overdraft, this is when um, uh, the bank has allowed our account to go negative. Bank overdrafts are normally short term because the interest charges tend to be quite high. So this is we're going to have to pay that back to the bank within the next 12 months. Trade creditors, this is the opposite of the debtors. So trade credit creditors means we bought an input from another business and we have to pay them at a certain date in the future. So if we have creditors on the balance sheet, it means that another business has given us trade credit. We've, we've been, they've given us the inputs, the assets, but we haven't paid for them yet. And so in the next 12 months, we're likely to have to pay for those. And finally, other short-term loans. So these are loans from the bank less than 12 months. Non-current liabilities are like non-current assets. These are long-term loans, usually longer than 12 months. So these are medium to long-term bank loans. So going back to the balance sheet, if we look here, everything up to this point is identical. So this is what we did before. Everything's identical. We can now add in the liabilities. So firstly, we add the current liabilities. Now, this is different here because with assets, we do non-current first and then we do current second. With liabilities, we do current first and then non-current second. Um, in a later video, we'll see why we do that. But effectively, we put the current assets and li current liabilities together. So we've got bank overdraft of 200 million, trade creditors of 100 million, other short-term loans of 200 million. And then we add those together to get 500 million. By the way, if you're wondering where these numbers come from, I've kind of made these numbers up. So for the particular business that you're looking at or you're constructing the balance sheet for, you'll be given the numbers. So here I've just made these numbers up to kind of look realistic for what a business might look like. Then non-current liabilities here, we've got long-term borrowing of 300 million. And then we've got non-current liabilities, the total of 300 million. And then like the assets, we add them together. So total liabilities, we do the 500 from the current and the 300 from the non-current to get 800 million in total liabilities. Then what we do is we get net assets. The word net means we do one thing minus another thing. So we do total assets minus total liabilities. So 1.9 billion minus 1.1 billion, minus, sorry, minus 800 million gives us 1.1 billion. So what does this mean? What does this net assets mean? Well, mathematically, it's total assets minus total liabilities, which we've just seen from the balance sheet. And it is one measure of the worth of a business. You could call this the balance sheet value of a business. And effectively, what we can say is that if we sold all the assets and we paid off all the liabilities, then this is how much money would be left. 
So the, when we, if we sold all the assets, we get money in. We then have to pay for the liabilities, and that would be money out. And this would be the money left, and this would go to the investors. And so therefore, we now need to add equity to the balance sheet, where equity is effectively the value of the business for shareholders or, or, or owners. And this can come from share capital and from retained earnings. Retained earnings are the sum of all the previous profits put back into the business. So if you remember from the profit and loss, we saw that when we got to the bottom, that profit number could either go to dividends to shareholders or would be retained back into the business. So on the balance sheet, retained earnings are the sum of all these previous profits that's been retained into the business. Again, I'm probably going to do an extra video at that some point in the future because that is a bit confusing, but that's kind of all you need to know in this situation. And then we get equity equals net assets, as we see. So going back to the balance sheet, we can now finish it off. So uh, last time we got down to net assets as 1.1 billion. Now we need to add equity. So equity can either be share capital or it can be retained earnings. So in this situation, I've, again, I've created these numbers. We've got share capital, which the business has raised through investment of 100 million. And all the previous profits have added up to uh, 1 billion. And then we add those together to get total equity. That's the balance sheet finished. Um, but one thing to note is these things are highlighted in green. These two numbers are identical. And that's because they're identical. And that's why we call it a balance sheet is that these two numbers must balance. They must be the same. And I will definitely do a, 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 pre, a future video about why that is the case. But effectively, you don't really need to know that. Um, you just need to be able to construct a balance sheet. One final word of, uh, of note is that we must follow this exact, for, this, is, this exact way of doing the balance sheet. We must use all of these terms. If you look at real company balance sheets, they're going to use different terminology. But the IB is determined that we must use these. So we're basically all using the same terminology. So learn this structure, memorize it, and then you can just put the numbers in. So just to summarize the format of the balance sheet, we do non-current assets and current assets. We do current liabilities and non-current liabilities. And then we do equity. And within those titles, we can then add lots of things within there. And that's effectively all the balance sheet is. On to the non-profit entity balance sheet. So with the profit and loss, we did the profit and loss for the profit-making entity and the non-profit en profit making entity. Um, and we saw that there was a small difference. For the balance sheet, for the non-profit entity, it's almost identical except down here in retained earnings. We won't have any shareholder capital. And so all of the earnings um, will comprise the equity. So therefore, we just have retained earnings down here. Final thing for this video is different types of intangible assets. I said I'd talk about this earlier in the video. So like we said earlier, tangible assets are assets that have um, that are physical, have physical substance. So the word tangible means that you can touch something effectively. So these we saw were things like factory, land, and vehicles. Intangible assets are assets which have value but have no physical properties, so we can't actually touch them. And we're going to go through some examples. But importantly, these are not financial instruments. So effectively, if you've got money in the bank account, it's an asset, um, and we can't touch the bank account. But this would not be included under intangible assets. So intangible assets would be things that are marketing related, so trademarks, logos, brand names, slogans, internet domain names, etc. So you can see here that the IKEA logo, this is owned by IKEA. They have a um, they have copyright over this. No one else can use it. Um, things like brand names as well. So these have value to the business, so therefore they can go under intangible assets. Technology related, so the business owns a patent. So a patent is when you you apply for a document that says that only you can use that invention for a period of time. So, for example, this is the Apple store in Shanghai. Um, and this staircase, Apple's actually patented. So no one else in the world can copy this designer staircase and use it because Apple have, have patented this. Contract related, so things like franchises and licensing agreements and also goodwill. So the value of the customer base. So a business... Um, has all those things on the balance sheet, but also they have customers who are loyal to their business. And this is valuable. This is effectively the intangible asset, the customer base. 
So we can include that under intangible assets. Right, that is the balance sheet finished and the intangible assets finished. That is quite a long video, but the balance sheet is super important um, for the syllabus. Next video, we'll do depreciation. I'll see you then.